Hello everyone, today I'll be going over how to use the PSO2 model and animation tools to import and export animations to PSO2. So first things first, we'll go to the PSO2 file directory and find something to use as a base for this. We can use costumes here, or we can go ahead and use the player body here, which I'm going to use because that's a little simpler for this. So let's go ahead and go into our data directory, Win32, search that up, because I don't feel like looking at manually, and we're going to put it in our repacker folder. Now for animations, we'll be going to the high risk file directory, and it's high risk because we don't exactly know how much Sega looks into this sort of thing. They may look into it a lot and it would be easy for them to, so we're just going to say that if you do this sort of thing and you're not careful, you could get in trouble. Anyways, for now we're going to go with female non-cast, basically the fleshy animations. And we'll go here, and it's right here, but I already have it copied as you saw, so, you know, anyways. We'll go ahead and, and extract these right now. And so now we have to prep the model for import. How we're going to do that is we're going to go in here, the PSO2 body model, we're going to go in there, and then we're going to use this Niffle tool extended. You can either use the strip model headers PowerShell script or you can do this by hex. I'll just do it by hex since that's a little more interesting. We just simply go in here, and all of this stuff, goodbye, we'll resave this as AQO because that's what it would be output by if you use deicer, which is another option, but you can't repack it with that so we're not showing it today. So now that that's done, we can go in here, we can drag this into that, and now we have an object file not a op normal object file, it will crash in some programs, so just be aware of that. Now that we've gotten that exported to that though, for simplicity's sake, I guess we can just copy that back in there. But anyways, let's go ahead and go into this folder, and drag this in, and what do you know? Got a little script here. You can just leave the default settings on and click import. And we just want to import that model that we just did. So, boom. Quick note before I go into this more if we go in here, and then we do run script. It'll bring us to the default scripts area. You'll see this startup area here. Now, if we go in here, we can copy and paste our scripts in. Let's say, for example, we did this. That would make it so that all of these scripts started at startup of the program. So like every time you started max, then those would start right away. Of course, you don't really need to do this, and for my purposes, I don't like to have that happen, but if you're only using Max for that, that might be useful. Now that we've imported the model, we will go and pull this in. This is the animation importer. You can leave the settings exactly the same for this, but if we're exporting a player animation, we'll want this ticked at the end. Anyways, let's go ahead into here let's go into that animation folder that we extracted. Now we have a bunch of these here. We have quite a few, but we can go into one of these and just start editing. So this is our run animation as you can see. If I click play here, it will just begin playing. For those who don't know too much about Max, here's some basics to it. This is the selection tool, you use this to select different things. And if you want to select things easier, you can press F3, or you can go into 
here and select wireframe override or you can select default shading you can change between those however you want might make things a little easier to see and easier to select if you click through things then it'll try and select the things that are under whatever you're trying to select so you can kind of cycle through things that are kind of layered upon each other another way of selecting things is you can click this here or you can press H and that'll bring up the select by name now obviously we have a lot more bones than this if we want to expand it then we can press control A to select everything and now everything will be rolled out as you can see we've got 51 bones total if you count zero and we can go and select any of these to mess around with them so we can select the right upper arm there and we can do a lot of things with this perhaps one of the first tools that should be discussed with manipulating objects is the move tool here and once that's selected and you have an object selected you can go ahead and drag it around with this little gizmo here or if you want to use it precisely you can right click here and then you can manipulate these values and you can right click any of these transform tools to do a precise sort of editing the next tool we'll go over is the select and rotate tool so this tool is great if you want to do pretty much any kind of animation stuff because you can go in and do more natural movements with the bones here because obviously bones aren't really meant to move about crazily of course you can also do things like that if you want you know this is very natural but that's something you can do if you choose to so just keep that in mind and lastly lastly we have the scale tool which does about what it says it resizes things you probably won't want to use this most of the time because it, like the move tool gives a lot of crazy results but you know you never know it's uh definitely interesting I'm sure some people will want to use it for things like this but that's about how it goes do keep in mind though that if you use it it will be represented differently in game because PSO2 does scaling by node rather than by uh, everything under that node like in max and it's something I may make a little better to export but anyways I should also note that the way that I'm undoing all these changes is going to edit and then control Z control Y all that you know it's your standard sort of stuff so let's say that we want to edit the animations keyframes now which are what determines at what frame of animation something is doing and any object can have any number of these but let's say here that we have all of these keyframes for the arm you know what we don't want these keyframes for the arm so I'm just going to go ahead select these delete them we do kind of want these first and last ones although we can edit those if we want to those are just important for the animation to work properly later if you have any kind of keyframes on it but so first we'll do it without having like the keyframe mode on and what this will do is make it so that on every frame it's altered by that much so if we wanted to straighten the arm we would do it like this because that will go and do it for all frames rather than having to do it for a specific frame but say we wanted the arm to go straight like that and then extend out we would go in here select auto key like that and then move it around and it looks a little weird but the arm kind of straightens out at the end of the beginning so that's just kind of a basic thing you can do and you can do this for any of the transform tools here 
we can have it so that on this frame in particular it grows large. You know, that's a little strange, but we can do that. And we can do a move on this frame so that it goes way the hell out there. And you know, but it's not going back because we're not copying it. If we want to copy it, we just do this. We select it and then we hold shift and then drag it. And that will copy the keyframe. And she goes Mr. Fantastic there and pulls it back in. But I'm assuming that we don't want any of that. It's also worth noting that you can go ahead and if you want one of these transition frames, say, you can go to that, that area there, you can press set key, and now you actually have a keyframe for that transition area. But if you do do set key, then you'll notice that you get all of the transform things here. Position, rotation, and scale, which these ones are just rotation, this green one. You may not want that, so you can go in and delete these here, but that's kind of up to you. And now I guess I'll go ahead and make a basic animation edit so that I can show this off. I should also note that if you have a costume here, you'll get some extra bones that are for physics parts like dress frills and all that that flop around. You may want to delete those and select from scene here. You can do that by going and clicking an object and then pressing delete on it. But for this model, everything that we have here is everything we want anyway, so don't worry about it. And I'll go ahead and make the animation here. Just really quick, I want to show that we can use this outer ring here to rotate by the angle that you see in the viewport. Like if I move over here, then it'll rotate by this angle. It's a little more convenient for rotating sometimes because X, Y, and Z don't always give you exactly what you want for the axis. Anyways. And now we have a basic little Naruto run. So real quick, another topic that I think should be brought up is scaling animations to a particular time. Now obviously this animation is 21 frames total with zero. And so if we wanted to have an animation that was a bit longer or shorter depending on things, like say you made an animation but then you wanted to adapt it for another animation that's a bit longer, what you would do is you can go in here, rescale time, and you can do this to any time. Like you can do this to 21, you know, 24, 23, you can do any of that even though the original is 20, like it doesn't have to be exact. But do note that you will have to do rescale keys to whole frames because of how the script works and how I believe PSO2's animations need to work. But anyways, let's say that we wanted to make this twice as long. Let's make the frame count 42 here. And now we've got kind of a slow Naruto run. Everything's in slow motion. But that's about how you want it to be. Okay, now we're ready to export the animation. Since we are doing a player, we want this on. And we're not doing a cast, but if we were doing a cast, we'd want both of them on. If we were doing neither a cast nor a player, we would want both of them off. Now, make sure that YZ flip and base scale match rescale and YZ axis respectively and all that. And let's go ahead and do export anim. Go into our edit folder and we're going to replace dash F loop like we loaded from. Now something to note is that PSO2 has a bit of a weird system with its archives and there is a group one and a group two of sorts that the files will be sorted into when they're compiled. Um, 
so if we look in here, we'll see that we have this .rgn, and you'll want to make sure that's there too if you're doing the, this particular animation set because this character common RGN is going to make our game crash if we don't do that. So yeah, make sure that's in there, make sure that's your near group one, and if it's in your group one, we can go to uncompress.bad and do that. I'll have a link in the description for a few different combinations of this we've discovered because sometimes it varies. But anyways, now that we've done that, we're going to put that into our mod folder and we're going to launch the game. And as you can see here, we got our Mimi little Naruto run. Now we can all pretend that we're in middle school. Thanks for watching and uh, feel free to subscribe and all that if you want to see more of these things. And feel free to check out our Discord if you want to be able to ask questions and get a better understanding of all this. Thank you.